Part 1 of Excerpts from Chapter 19 of To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Thomas Robinson reached around, ran his fingers under his left arm, and lifted it. He guided his arm to the Bible, and his rubber-like left hand sought contact with the black binding. As he raised his right hand, the useless one slipped off the Bible and hit the clerk's table. He was trying again when Judge Taylor growled, That'll do, Tom. Tom took the oath and stepped into the witness chair. Atticus very quickly induced him to tell us. Tom was 25 years of age. He was married with three children. He had been in trouble with the law before. He once received 30 days for disorderly conduct. It must have been disorderly, said Atticus. What did it consist of? Got in a fight with another man. He tried to cut me. Did he succeed? Yes, sir. A little. Not enough to hurt. You see, I... Tom moved his left shoulder. Yes, said Atticus. You were both convicted? Yes, sir. I had to serve because I couldn't pay the fine. Other fellow paid his and... Dill leaned across me and asked Jem what Atticus was doing. Jem said Atticus was showing the jury that Tom had nothing to hide. Were you acquainted with Mayella Violet Ewell? asked Atticus. Yes, sir. I had to pass her place going to and from the field every day. Whose field? I picks for Mr. Link Diaz. Were you picking cotton in November? No, sir. I works in his yard fall and winter time. I works pretty steady for him all year round. He's got a lot of pecan trees and things. You say you had to pass the Ewell place to get to and from work. Is there any other way to go? No, sir. None's I know of. Tom, did she ever speak to you? Why, yes, sir. I'd tip my hat when I'd go by, and one day she asked me to come inside the fence and bust up a chiffer robe for her. When did she ask you to chop up the... the chiffer robe? Mr. Finch, it was way last spring. She give me the hatchet, and I broke up the chiffer robe. She said... I reckon I'll have to give you a nickel, won't I? And I said, No, ma'am, there ain't no charge. Then I went home. Mr. Finch, that was way last spring, way over a year ago. Did you ever go on the place again? Yes, sir. When? Well, I went lots of times. Judge Taylor instinctively reached for his gavel, but let his hand fall. The murmur below us died without his help. Under what circumstances? Please, sir? Why did you go inside the fence lots of times? Tom Robinson's forehead relaxed. She'd call me in, sir. Seemed like every time I passed by yonder, she'd have some little something for me to do. Chopping kindling, toting water for her. She watered them red flowers every day. Were you paid for your services? No, sir. Not after she offered me a nickel the first time. I was glad to do it. Mr. Ewell didn't seem to help her none. And neither did the chillin'. And I knowed she didn't have no nickels to spare. Where were the other children? They was always around, all over the place. They'd watch me work, some of them. Some of them had sat in the window. Would Miss Mayella talk to you? Yes, sir. She talked to me. As Tom Robinson gave his testimony, it came to me that Mayella Ewell must have been the loneliest person in the world. She was even lonelier than Boo Radley, who had not been out of the house in twenty-five years. When Atticus asked had she any friends, she seemed not to know what he meant. Then she thought he was making fun of her. 
She was as sad, I thought, as what Jem called a mixed child. White people wouldn't have anything to do with her because she lived among pigs. Black people wouldn't have anything to do with her because she was white. She couldn't live like Mr. Dolphus Raymond, who preferred the company of black people, because she didn't own a river bank, and she wasn't from a fine old family. Nobody said, that's just their way, about the Ewells. Maycom gave them Christmas baskets, welfare money, and the back of its hand. Tom Robinson was probably the only person who was ever decent to her. But she said he took advantage of her, and when she stood up, she looked at him as if he were dirt beneath her feet. Did you ever, Atticus interrupted my meditations, at any time go on the Ewell property? Did you ever set foot on the Ewell property without an express invitation from one of them? No, sir, Mr. Finch, I never did. I wouldn't do that, sir. Atticus sometimes said that one way to tell whether a witness was lying or telling the truth was to listen rather than watch. I applied his test. Tom denied it three times in one breath, but quietly, with no hint of whining in his voice, and I found myself believing him in spite of his protesting too much. He seemed to be a respectable black person, and a respectable black person would never go up into somebody's yard of his own volition. Tom, what happened to you on the evening of November 21st of last year? Below us, the spectators drew a collective breath and leaned forward. Behind us, the black people did the same. Tom was a black velvet black person. Not shiny, but soft black velvet. The whites of his eyes shone in his face, and when he spoke, we saw flashes of his teeth. If he had been whole, he would have been a fine specimen of a man. Mr. Finch, he said, I was going home as usual that evening, and when I passed the Ewell place, Miss Mayella were on the porch, like she said she were. It seemed real quiet like and I didn't quite know why. I was studying why, just passing by, when she says for me to come there and help her a minute. Well, I went inside the fence and looked around for some kindling to work on, but I didn't see none. And she says, No, nah, I got something for you to do in the house. The old door's off its hinges and falls coming on pretty fast. I said, You got a screwdriver, Miss Mayella? She said she show head. Well, I went up the steps and she motioned to me to come inside, and I went in the front room and looked at the door. I said, Miss Mayella, this door look all right. I pulled it back and forth and those hinges was all right. Then she shut the door in my face. Mr. Finch, I was wondering why it was so quiet like, and it come to me that there weren't a child on the place. Not a one of them. And I said, Miss Mayella, where are the chillin? Tom's black velvet skin had begun to shine, and he ran his hand over his face. I say, where are the chillin? He continued. And she says, she was laughing, sort of. She says they all gone to town to get ice creams. She says, took me a slap year to save seven nickels, but I done it. They all gone to town. Tom's discomfort was not from the humidity. What did you say then, Tom? Asked Atticus. I said something like, Why, Miss Mayella, that's right smart of you to treat him. And she said, You think so? I don't think she understood what I was thinking. I meant it was smart of her to save like that, and nice of her to treat him. I understand you, Tom. Go on, said Atticus. Well, I said I'd best be going. I couldn't do nothing for her. And she says, oh, yes, I could. And I ask her what? And she says to just step on that chair yonder and get that box down from on top of the shiffer robe. 
Not the same shiver robe you busted up? Asked Atticus. The witness smiled. No, sir. Another one. Most as tall as the room. So I done what she told me. And I was just reaching when the next thing I knows she... She grabbed me round the legs. Grabbed me round the legs, Mr. Finch. She scared me so bad, I hopped down and turned the chair over. That was the only thing, only furniture, stirred in that room, Mr. Finch, when I left it. I swear for God. 